Dropping the Needle. You're listening to Dropping the Needle, the podcast where all music from all genres is discussed. New releases, classic albums, rediscovered music, signed and unsigned. No ass kissing. Just two guys talking about music. Here are your hosts, Michael Brandvold from Michael Brandvold Marketing and Mitch LaFont. Today we have Hans from Bonfire with us. How, how, are, you, how are you doing today? I'm very fine. Thank you. Thanks a lot. The weather is fine. The first day since, uh, I think, two weeks of, of very hard rain. And today we have about uh, 20 degrees uh, uh, Celsius. Nice. I don't know what is in Fahrenheit. I don't okay, know. Okay. <laughs> I, very... I deal with Celsius also. So. Okay. Yeah, it's, so. a, it's a bit like Montreal. We did a week of rain. We had 20 yesterday, and by Friday it's supposed to be 32. So. Yeah. So, but uh, the sad thing is that tomorrow it will rain again. So we have to enjoy this day. God, I gotta tell you, it never rains. So, so, so you're here today mainly to speak about your new album, Live in Wacken. Uh, tell me a little bit about that experience. Playing well, at Wacken. Wacken was was a, a great experience. I think we we've been there. It was uh, 1998, and um, I think it's a, a very special festival. Uh, the people uh, who are there are very. They feel very free, like it was in the old uh, Woodstock uh, thing. Yeah. In the, in the yeah. 70s, so uh, everybody uh, comes from all over the world to that festival. And right now, in, in nowadays, it, I think it's the biggest uh, metal festival worldwide. Yeah, it really is. And why do you think it, 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 it's managed to attract so many people? I mean, it, it's sort of a tiny little place in Germany. and Well, I don't really know, because some some things uh, happened like like this so uh, it started as a, a, as a small festival as everything starts so i don't know why it, it went so big uh, there are a lot of festivals in the world who uh, who have the same lineups and have the same yeah. stuff but this is perhaps the small this wacken is about a, a, a village about f- six or eight hundred people living there and uh, on, on uh, one day in a year, they, they have about 80,000, 90,000 people there. And uh, I think they make uh, also a lot of money because they get, I think for the, I heard about it, that they get for the, for the place, uh, they rent to the, to the uh, promoters about one or two million dollars for, for the rent. So they will, <laughs> for, for that people, it was really a, a good thing that the festival started there. Yeah, no. But, uh, uh, you ask another thing. But I, I really don't know why it went so big. Uh, it has a special flair, and um, I think uh, the rock uh, people are are a big family there. There are uh, metal fans like like death metal and melodic metal and speed metal. Everybody and uh, a lot of bands play there. So uh, from from each uh, sector, I think there are, there are all kind of bands, but it's still rock. It's so not rock. like... like now, a, the album itself, is is currently only available in Germany, or only be available in Germany, or is it going to be worldwide? No, it's going to be worldwide. It's uh, We have it in Germany, Austria, Switzerland with, uh, with Sony. Okay. And we have it worldwide with uh, uh, Yes, The Rock. It's a company in Munich. And, of course, you can... Uh, Get it on Amazon and all those that that uh, big places in the in the internet. So you know, Bonfire has been around since about 1986. Before that, there was sort of another version of Bonfire. Um, you know, it's been it's been nearly 30 years. You've been mostly successful in Europe. Um, are, any plans to come back to North America and, and play some shows or, or put a push in this part of the world? Yeah, well, well, we we would die for our coming back. We we did a show in two thousand nine, yeah. uh, in the Rocklahoma Festival. Great festival. But it was just one show, so uh, we would we we would love to make a tour over there. But um, it's very difficult to get there as a German band. So uh, 
fingers crossed that it will happen the next one or two years because uh, we would die to play there. We played in the 80s a, a tour over there yeah. and it was really big fun. So when we did the, the Fireworks album, after, uh, we, we made also a tour where we went with the tour bus uh, through the whole country and we really had some good shows over there. So. I don't know if the people know us very well in, in, in North America, but, well, it's time to, to make them know us. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's what I don't understand. I mean, you've been around nearly 30 years as Bonfire, and yet in North America, you're not as known as you should be, and in Europe, people love you. So, uh, no, we, we, in Europe, it's very great. We, we, we have, to, uh, for example, in, in Czech Republic, we really have uh, big shows over there, also in Ukraine and in, in Poland. And uh, the, the East market, the East European market is a good market for us. And the people are really into rock and roll in this, in this country. And uh, uh, for us, it's easy to go uh, to the East side of Europe because it's not very far from us. So it's a new market we want to discover. And we, the last two years, we really did great in that countries. Now, what are the plans for recording a new album? Are you working on any new material right now? Yeah. Uh, I've been working on writing songs since last, last year, November, December. And um, it's, a, it's a process where we, we've been writing and touring. Not, we don't uh, make it like we did it in, in the past, that we go two months in the studio and then we uh, afterwards make a tour. We have a lot of festival gigs uh, in, in summer in, in, in Europe and Germany. So um, it's not possible to, to make a split and, and go to the studio. So we did it as a, um, we drive on two lanes, I think, uh, let's say it like that. Yeah, let me ask you a little bit about making an album in this day and age. You know, obviously we're 2013. Why bother making a full album? I mean, with iTunes and downloads, why not just make two or three songs, put them on iTunes, come back six months later, do two or three songs. Why bother making an album? That's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, it's planned to make a new album. Right. Um, right. I think uh, the, the industry goes in that way, that they ju just like Bon Jovi did, it, it did right. just right. one or two uh, new songs and, and the best of uh, album together with the two new songs and then they go on tour. Uh, you can work like this, and, and it's even it's easier. You don't have that, that progress to head to uh, the promotion uh, company and everything to get together for the new album. So, well, perhaps you did you did a good uh, thing. Uh, a good uh, idea. Yeah, my mind because perhaps we, we have. Why don't take the the best, the the strongest three songs of of the stuff we wrote and. And put it uh, out on on, on oh, iTunes okay. or, or Amazon, or yeah. perhaps yeah. make a make a, an EP like like uh, three new songs and stuff like that. Because you are right, the people don't uh, buy uh, that that uh, full albums anymore. Anymore, that's that's right. So I'm just looking at there, there are two bands that when I ask that question that I think of in particular, Sammy Hager, about five years ago, decided that he was going to put out singles as they came to him and then recently Skid Row did five songs and they plan on doing another five songs in about six months and five songs after that in about a year from now to have 15 but they're going to sort of pace them out and instead of being one album it's going to be three mini albums with sort of different musical tastes to it yeah it's an interesting concept yeah it's interesting I, I think yes it's really interesting because um, if you are, if you don't have the time, like to get the, this uh, spirit of the studio, uh, even if you uh, if you play and record and play and record, you don't have this this special spirit of a, of a studio album. That's that's really true. So why not? Why not? Uh, why not? Have to talk to Klaus to <laughs> again to see about these things. Like <coughs> that. we were yeah. doing yeah. things like that. It's not a bad idea. Uh, let me ask you a couple of other questions here. Uh, back in the day, you did a song called Sword and Stone. It was 
originally done by Paul Stanley and Bruce Kulick as a demo for their 1987 Crazy Nights album. How did you get a hold of the song, and how, how did that story of you recording it come about? Well, it was like that. We've been recording the Point Blank al album right. in Los Angeles, and we wrote uh, uh, together with Devin Child. And um, <clears throat> we, there's one, one uh, song on the album which is called uh, Price of Loving You, recorded uh, and Klaus and me uh, were together with, with Desmond Child in his studio and did this song right. and after the, afterwards Desmond came on and he says he has this song Sword and Stone and want to do, his, want to do it on this uh, Shocker album from, from the, the, movie. the movie and so it happens so we, we, uh, we recorded the song and uh, it came on the Shocker album and that's the deal so no big deal about the, about the story, I think. Were, were you a big Kiss fan, or what, was it just like an exciting moment for you, or is it just truly, I got a great song, we got to record this? Yes. Well, who isn't a Kiss fan? <laughs> Everybody is like a Kiss fan, so, so right. of course it's an honor to, 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 to record a, a song from uh, Paul Stanley written, so, um, and it's one of our highlights in the show when we play it, so a lot of people love that song, and a lot of people blame Kiss not to do the song on their own. I, yeah, I, I'm we, one of those. They, they should. Yeah, so so we are happy to, to get it and have a special version and it's good for Bonfire and uh, well, good song and uh, it fits perfect to our to our live show. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, before you were mentioning, you, you said, you know, German bands. There's a band out there called Accept that has that sort of disappeared and then re, you know, came back. What was your experience with Accept? Are you a fan? Do you know them? Do you have any stories about Accept? Well, we know that guys very well because when we were recording our uh, 86 album, Don't Touch the Light, they were in the studio and did the recordings for um, Metal Heart, this right. album. And we met the guys and we even sang uh, cho the chorus, to the whole band together with them on a song of, of, of the Metal Heart album. So it's also written on the, on the, uh, uh, on the stuff uh, on the album that Bonfire sang on this song. Oh, did you really? Yeah, we really sing on, on, on it's, I think it's, I can't remember right now the name of the song, but uh, if you look... Yeah, there will be uh, a note that Bonfire uh, sang on this on this special song. Yeah. yeah. As as a fan, I think it's time to see a, a tour package with you know Bonfire, except and the Scorpions. I think that would be great. Get a get a German assault tour going. Yeah, that would be great. Of course. Well, uh, I know I know the guys. I know Garvey Hauke very well, uh, who who is the manager of of Accept and. Uh, there are always a, a, a times when we, we, we met us, when we uh, were at, at concerts or stuff like that, but we never had the chance to play with them, so why not? Got to make it happen. <laughs> Would be a good package, yes. So what's the future of Bonfire? At, at some point, do you retire and say enough's enough, or do you just sort of keep making music for the next 15 years? Well, the pro problem, or not the problem, is that I cannot do any other things because this is the be best thing I can, yeah. so I'm making music. Um, well, I don't think about uh, those things to, to quit everything. As long as, as I have fun and I, uh, I have good ideas to, to write songs and, and we play good live shows, why not? I play as long as, as, as your body uh, lets you. So. Uh, can be that we've, we've been on, on, on the road the next 10 or 5, 15 years, why not? Why not? Now, outside of Bonfire, what are you doing? Are you producing any bands? Are you writing with anybody else? Well, yes. Um, I did a, a very interesting thing, uh, thing uh, uh, <coughs> here. Uh, it was a, like a gangster rap album where the guys asked me to play a, a few cool guitar riffs on this album. And uh, so I, I had two songs who made it on this album, and uh, 
it went number one in Germany. So <laughs> it was my first number one album, nice. but, but not just as a songwriter, not as a bonfire. So whenever I get the chance, I make uh, other things. So, but I don't, uh, are a special producer. I, I, the first time I, I did this, this mixing on, on Life in Wacken because nobody wants to mix it. So I did it on my own. Um, <clears throat> the, you, you did a great track. job, by the way. I've heard the Thank album, you. and it sounds fantastic. And in fact, you were kind enough to donate Sword and Sewn to this Kiss tribute project that I'm putting together for a cancer care uh, hospice. And uh, it sounds great. It sounds, it sounds huge. Thank you very much. <laughs> so perhaps I have a new career as a, as a, a mixing guy. <laughs> yeah. who, do, who knows? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, now, if people want to find you online, where, where do they find you? Well, I have I have my my uh, Facebook uh, uh, profile where it's uh, Facebook dot com Hans dot Ziller. Yeah. That's my my Facebook profile, and also Bonfire is on Bon is Bonfire official. On, on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Okay. So it's Bonfire. It's it's just Facebook dot com slash bonfire official one word and we are we have our uh, just our regular home page this is uh, www.bonfire.de for germany de yeah well so, hopefully uh, hopefully fans will go check it out i mean uh, i gotta say uh, for you know for fans of bon jovi for example who like hard rock back from like the slippery and wet days yeah. Bonfire is the band that's still doing it. You're you're still delivering the goods. You're not doing these country albums and and ballad albums. You're still delivering the goods. So yeah. let's hope people get out there and check you out. Thanks you. Thank you very much. Well, great. Any last words? Well, to everybody who are who are listening and still believing in rock, hard rock, metal, and every other rock music, stay tuned and keep the bonfire burning. Great. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, this is Bumblefoot from Guns N' Roses, and I just released my own award-winning gourmet hot sauces. From the mild cherry bourbon bumblelicious to the over-the-top bumblefucked. So, if you want to get bumblefucked, visit bumblefoot.com for more information. You've been listening to Dropping the Needle. Dropping the Needle. With Michael Branvold and Mitch LaFon.